Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at traditional IRA and Roth IRA. This topic is covered in an income tax course, CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my students that I would like to connect with you on a personal as well as a professional level. If you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me. If you do have a Facebook account and you're a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level on my Facebook. If you are you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. It's very important because this is where I house all my lectures, so you're always up to date. And if you like my lectures, please press the like button, share them with others, and put them in playlists so other people can benefit. I do have a Twitter account and a website where I house all my recordings organized by course and chapter. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of videos on Jaeger CPA, on Jaeger CPA Review, similar to this one. Look at thousands of multiple choice questions to practice with solution, with detailed solution, simulation, textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards, plus other. So if you are a college student or a CPA student, you could supplement your, you could supplement your, uh, you could supplement your recording, you, I'm sorry, supplement your studies. And if you happen to visit Jaeger, use my code PMF and you will get 10% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So let's talk about individual retirement account or they're known as IRA. Now the, the IRA we're talking about here is, is not the Irish Republic Army. This is individual retirement account. So what's the idea behind the IRA, the individual retirement account? Well, think about it. If you work for a company, you might have a 401k, or if you work as a teacher or in some governmental institution, you, may have, you might have a 403b. What are, what are those, uh, what are those, uh, what are those plans? Those plans, they will help you contribute money to your retirement. That's assuming you do have 401k or 403b. But what if your company does not offer those retirement accounts? Well, the government said you can shelter away some money. You can deduct some money away. Shelter means deduct some money for your retirement. Okay. So simply put, let me show you on the tax return what it looks like. So what happened is this. You might have, you will have income. You might have income. You will have income. And let's assume you have a total income happens to be $50,000. So this is your income, $50,000. Now the government gives you some adjustments. Those are basically deductions. And one of those deductions is the one that we're going to be talk talking about today is IRA deduction. So the IRA deduction would reduce your income, would reduce this 50000 Remember you have income total of 50000 here. You're going to be able to shelter some money. What, what I mean by shelter is put some money away. So put it away, not get it taxed now. Okay, you can shelter up to 5,500. We're going to talk about the amount, but basically this is what it is. Th th that's what it is. So this is deduction for AGI. It's above AGI. AGI is on line 37, so you'll take the deduction before AGI, which is good. We like the deduction to be for AGI because it doesn't compete with the standard deduction. Okay. So as I just said, the contribution ceiling is generally speaking 5,500 or the lesser of 5,500 or 100% of your earned income. What does that mean? It means if you only worked and you earned $3,000 per year, you can only deduct $3,000. So it's, you cannot deduct more than your earned income, but we're assuming here if you, if you make more than 5,500, you are limited to 5,500. Now, if you are a person age 50 or over, the government said, you know what, you're getting closer to retirement. We're going to give you an additional $1,000. So you can have an additional catch up. So simply put per year, you can contribute up to 6,500. Now, bear in mind, if you are a participant in an active, a qualified plan, so deductible IRA contribution may be reduced if the taxpayer is an active participant in another qualified plan. Qualified plan, again, 401k, 403b, a retirement account at your work. Now, to the extent an individual is ineligible to make a deductible contribution, so if you cannot make a deductible contribution, you can make a non-deductible. Simply put, non-deductible, it means you cannot deduct it for, for, for tax purposes this year because it's non-deductible. But the good thing about the IRA is the income accrues tax deferred. So simply put, 
whether the contribution is deductible, you want it to be deductible because if it's deductible, it's reducing your taxes now. If you cannot, you can make a non-deductible contribution. The good thing is all the income, you don't have to pay taxes on it now. It will grow tax deferred until you take it out. And this is the topic of another session, what happened when you take it out. Now, I talked about the qualified plan. So if you are covered in a qualified plan, the IRA deduction phase out within an AGI ranges. So simply put, if you are single and head of a household, 63,000, once your AGI start at 63,000, it ends at 73. So you have a $10,000 range. Married filing, filing a joint return, start at 101, ends at 121, and married filing separately, very bad. You start at zero, and once you make 10,000, you can no longer contribute to your IRA. It's, they really penalize you with married filing separately. Let's take a look at a few examples to see how this all fits. So we have Dan, who's a single, has a compensation income of 69,000. He's an active participant in his employer qualified plan. So he makes 69,000. Let's go back up here. 69,000 is within, with above 63, but below seven, above 63, but below 73. So guess what? He entered the phase out range. So he's not gonna be able to deduct the full 5,500. So then contribute 5,500 to his traditional IRA. What is the deductible amount? So we need to know what's the deductible amount and what's the amount that's non-deductible. What we do is we take the amount above the range. The range starts at 63, it ends at 73. It's a $10,000 range. He's then is 6,000 above the range. Then is at 69,000. So we're gonna take the 6,000 divided by 10,000, which is, it means that the ratio is 60%. We're gonna take 60% multiplied by 5,500. So his, contribution of 5,500 will be reduced by 3,300. This will be non-deductible. Then what's left is 2,200, and that's the deductible. So simply put, we're gonna go back up here, just kind of go back to all of this. Now what, what, what Dan can do, can only on this line put 2,200, although he contributed 5,500. Now it doesn't matter, the other, the other no, it matters. Well, the other amount is basically will grow tax Tax deferred, tax deferred, okay. Aaron, an unmarried individual, is an active participant in his employer qualified retirement plan in 2018 with AGI of 72,800, okay. He would normally have an IRA deduction limit of $110, which is if we take the 5,500, you know, take out the range times 5,500. However, because of the special floor provision, Aaron is allowed a $200 deduction. There's a floor provision, so you can contribute up to $200. Now, what if one person is participating in a qualified plan and the other one is not? So we have husband and wife. One is participating and the other one is not participating in a qualified plan. Now, the phase out range now will change, goes from 189 to 199, because here we said married filing jointly uh, 101 to 121, that's assuming active participation. What if only one person is active participant? Then the phase out rate, the phase out range will change. Let's take a look at an example. Assume Nell is covered, which is Nell is covered uh, by a qualified employer retirement plan. Her husband, Nick, is not. So one is and one is not an active participant. If Nell and, Nell and Nick combined income is 138, Nell cannot make a deduction contribution. Why? because it's already qualified by a plan and they're above the phase out range, okay? Now, bear in mind, Nick is not an active participant and their combined income does not exceed 189. Therefore, in this situation, Nick can still make a contribution of 5,500, but not Nell. Nell is an active participant and their combined income is 135. Nick can. Now, if Nick was also an active participant, then they cannot make the contribution. The only reason why Nick is able to, because he's not an active participant, not an active participant. So what happened if you don't qualify for a traditional IRA? Are you out of luck? And the reason, and the answer is not. You do have an alternative called Roth IRA. Now IRA, individual retirement account, what is Roth? Just in case you're wondering, what does Roth mean? It's Roth is, name, is, is the individual name, the senator's name that sponsored basically this, this, this plan, William Roth, and he happens to be a senator from Delaware, very close to where I live. So you have an alternative plan called Roth IRA. Now we need to learn about Roth IRA and the difference between a Roth IRA and a traditional, what we talked about IRA, uh, the traditional IRA. The first, and the most important 
difference is contribution are non-deductible. Simply put, you remember when I showed you on the 10-4, you can deduct for AGI the money that you contribute here. You cannot deduct for AGI the contribution. And that's important. Simply put, you cannot get a deduction this year. Okay? The maximum allowable amount is the smaller of 5500 or 11000 if you if you are with a, if you are filing with a spouse or 100% of the compensation for the year simply put no more than your earned income now bear in mind that you can um, the qualified distribution so when you get your money out they are tax free why they are tax free they are tax free after the initial 5 year holding period why think about it when you contributed your money so this is the let's assume this is the let me just say make Okay. This is the traditional, and this is the Roth. What happened is this. All the money that went into your traditional was deductible. Deductible means it was sheltered from taxes. You did not pay taxes on it. So all the money went in, in your traditional, you did not pay any taxes on it. Therefore, when you take it out, then, then that's when it's taxed. Under the Roth IRA, all the money that's coming into your IRA is already taxed. Why? Because the contribution is non-deductible. Simply put, as long as you hold this money in there for an initial five-year period, then everything is tax-free. So when you take it out, it's tax-free. So when you bring it in, it's taxed. When you take it out, it's tax-free. The traditional IRA, you bring it in as deductible, you did not pay taxes on it. When you take it out, you pay taxes on it. So that's the main difference and an important difference. Now, bear in mind, you have to hold it for five years. Unless, uh, if the uh, qualified distribution are tax-free after initial five-year period, and if made on or after the age 59 and a half, made to beneficiary on or after the participant's death. So this is when you take have it tax-free. The participant becomes disabled, then you can take it out or used to pay first time home buyer expense and you're limited to $10,000. So you can take $10,000. Now what happened if you take it before? What happened if you take a Roth IRA contribution before they meet those requirements to be tax free? Well, distribution first is treated as return of capital, ROC or recovery of capital to the extent of contribution. So first, when you get your money, first is the amount that you put and the remaining amount is treated as taxable a payout of earning and any amount above what you contributed assuming you did not wait until you get it tax free then it's taxable okay and, and the best way to illustrate this as always is to work an example but bear in mind also that the uh, that 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 uh, that your contribution is also not unlimited okay so annual contribution are subject to phase out for single 120 to 135 for married filing jointly 189 to 199 and for married side filing separately zero to ten thousand dollars so you are, you, you are always i mean congress is generous but to a point okay so let's take a look at but notice here just kind of notice the ranges uh, for single is fifteen thousand for married filing jointly is ten thousand okay let's work an example amy establishes a roth ira at age 42 and contributed five thousand per year for 20 years. The account is now worth 149400 Now remember, this is a Roth IRA, so the amount that she contributed is already taxable. The 149 consists of 100000 of non-deductible contribution and 49400 in accumulated earnings. So she contributed 100 herself and the amount and the amount grew by 49400 so now Amy has 149,400, okay? Amy may withdraw the 149,400 tax-free from Roth because she is over the age 59 and a half because she started at 42 and she did, it, she did this for 20, 20 years, so she's at age at 62. Now, any money taken out is tax-free and that's the benefit of a Roth IRA. You pay the taxes now, but when you take it out, assuming you met the five-year period, everything is tax-free. So Pay the taxes now, and you will get you will get it tax free later. Assume the same fact, except that Amy is is only age fifty, and she received a distribution of fifty five. Age fifty is 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 before fifty nine and a half. So she, she took the money before she reaches the retirement age. What's going to happen is this. Remember, 
she contributed 100,000. So the first 50, um, and she took 55,000. Guess what? The first 55,000 is tax free. This amount is tax free because it's considered return of capital because she did not take more money than when she contributed. She contributed 100,000. So the first 55, the first 55,000 is tax free. What remained in her basis and the, in the Roth IRA is 45,000. Ben is single, would like to contribute 5,500 to his Roth IRA in 2018. His AGI is 130 and his contribution is limited. Why limited? Because notice here, 130 is right here within the phase out range, above 120, but below 135. So we're gonna have to make the same, basically the same uh, as the traditional. We have, um, uh, the AGI is 130, so his contribution is limited to 1,830, which is 5,500 the maximum, minus this X occlusion. How do we find the X occlusion? We'll take $10,000 divided by 15. Why $10,000? Remember, the, the phase out start at 120 and his AGI is 130. So he is 10,000 above the limit, but still within can contribute something. So we'll take this amount above the limit divided by 15,000 divided by the range, the range for single is 15,000. We multiply it by the amount uh, multiplied by the amount that you could possibly deduct 5,500, what's going to happen is you have to reduce your deduction by 3,667. So basically 0.667 is, you, you cannot take, you cannot consider it as a uh, Roth IRA. Okay. Uh, spousal IRA. What is a spousal IRA? Um, I remember when I was in college, uh, I'm sorry, when my wife was in college, um, she she was in college. I was working. So what happened is this: she was she did not have a retirement plan because she was in college. But since I was working, okay, if since I was working, she would consider to be working. Okay. So what happened is this: I can contribute, assuming I meet the limitation, fifty five hundred, and my spouse can contribute fifty five hundred. Although she's not working, she would still be able to contribute as long as I'm making more than eleven thousand. Okay. If both spouses have earned income, ceiling on deductible contribution is 11,000. Obviously, 11,000 is 5,500 times 2. So you can contribute 5,500. The other person can contribute 5,500. If one spouse has earned income, the ceiling is 11,000 or the earned income of the spouse. This is back to my situation when, when my wife was in college. She was able to contribute 5,500. And let me tell you, she did a good job. She invested that money in Microsoft. And Microsoft was in the 20s when she did that. So she made a good investment actually i still remember so so if your wife is not working or your husband is not working your earning is counted with them okay so the, in other words although they're not working since you are working they are contributing to that work therefore they can assume to be earning money as long as you're making more than eleven thousand, you can take 5500 they can take 5500 now obviously they have to file a joint return right that's that's obvious right so they have to must file a joint return let's take a look at an example tony who's married is eligible to establish an ira he received thirty thousand dollar in compensation in 2018 and his spouse does not work outside the home tony has contributed eleven thousand to the two ira to be divided in any manner between the two spouses except that no more than fifty five hundred to be allocated to either spouse so we could eleven thousand fifty five hundred forty also another thing you want to know is alimony is considered to be earned income now remember alimony is suspended starting 2018 but if you have a prior arrangement for alimony that's considered income so if, if if a spouse is receiving alimony for the purpose of an ira that's considered income okay earned income therefore a person whose only income is alimony can still contribute to an ira let's talk about timing and taxation when should you um, when should you uh, contribute and uh, how does the taxation work on the way out? Okay, contribution, timing of the contribution, contribution, both deductible and non-deductible can be made to an IRA anytime before the due date of the individual tax return without any extension. Generally speaking, we're looking at April 15th. So you wanna make the contribution before April 15th of the tax year in which you are filing, which is, that that's very good, that's very good, okay? Uh, taxation benefit. In other words, let's assume we are in 2018 now, okay? And this is 2019. Now, for 2018, you need to file your taxes by April 15th. Guess what? For 2018, you have up till 
April 15, 2019 to make your IRA contribution for 2018. So they give you up to April 15 of that tax year. Taxation of benefit. Well, you have a zero basis and a deductible contribution. Remember, if it's a traditional IRA, the money that you contributed was not taxed. So what's going to happen when you take the money, your basis is zero. Basis is zero. It means everything is taxable. Everything taxable because the basis is zero. You already contributed that money and get a tax deduction. When you take it out, well, the government has to tax you. If they did not tax you when you earn it, they will tax you when you take it out. So they're going to give you a chance to put it away now. But guess what? That's not tax-free forever. It's taxable when you take it out. Therefore, if you take money out of the traditional IRA, all of it is taxable. So all the withdrawal from a deductible IRA as is ordinary income in the year of receipt. Okay? A participant has a basis equal to the contribution made for a non-deductible traditional IRA. If the, if the, the IRA, that you, if the money that you contributed non-deductible, well, your basis is non-taxable. Okay? So therefore, only the earnings component of the withdrawal is included in gross income. So if you contributed 100000 and that money grew to 120, when you take the money out, only 20000 is deductible. The 100000 is not. Okay? Such amount as tax is ordinary income in the year of receipts. Okay. Again, the distribution, when should you make the distribution? Any distribution made before age 59 and a half, because you have to wait until 59 and a half, you're subject to a 10% penalty. So if you take the money out before 59 and a half, you're subject to 10% penalty. And this is what we're talking about traditional IRA, except for medical expenses in excess of 10% of AGI. And you'll see why that in chapter, in the following chapter. Qualified higher education expenses, you can take that money without a penalty for qualified higher education expenses. Qualified first time home buyer expense, if you want to buy a home, you can take out $10,000. Health insurance premium for person and family who has received unemployment compensation for at least 12 consecutive weeks. So if you lost your job and you need to pay for your health insurance, the government said you can take out money from your IRA tax-free. Now, when we talk about the IRA, you're going to hear the word rollover. So you have to understand what a rollover is. Rollover is a distribution. Basically, it's a distribution, but we have to be very careful. Why? Because when we take money out, remember, if it doesn't qualify for an exception, you are subject to a 10% penalty and the amount is taxable. So if you do a rollover, what is, what is rollover? Let's assume I have an account with company A. Now I want to change my plan and move it from company A to company B. So simply, I have some money here. I have $50,000 invested, and I want to move it from company A to company B. How could that happen? Well, I could ask company A to send me a check. Then I will take this check and deposit that check in company B. Okay? That's one option. The other option is to ask company A to do a roll over into company B. Company A will send that all the assets, whether it's stocks, cash, whatever, to company B. Now, what's the risk if I receive the check? If I receive the check, okay, and I don't transfer it, what's going to happen? So I don't put it in company A. I receive the 50000 and I spend it. Now I'm responsible for taxes and I'm subject to a penalty. So it's better that you let, when well, you want to do a rollover, Make sure you do direct rollover from one account to the other. Don't get the money. Because if you do get the money, and if you don't deposit that money, you're going to be in trouble. And this could happen when you ha when you work for a company and you have a 401k plan. And what they do, they say, once you leave the company, you need to move your money. Well, if you don't do it properly and they send you a check and you don't read it, you would say, this is, you know, this, this money is from your qualified plan. Make sure you deposit that money in another account and you deposit that money in your bank account. And I know something, a real case where one of my clients, actually a friend of mine, that's what she did. She received the money and she went and bought a car because she thought that's her retirement money. It was a very expensive car because she had to pay taxes and interest and it took her three years making payment back to the IRS to pay that money back. So make sure you understand what a rollover is. Rollovers is when the distribution from qualify is transferred within 60 days to an IRA. So you have a plan for a 1K and you transfer it to an IRA to an, or to another qualified plan. That amount is not includable in gross income. Why? Because you did not get the money. The money went from one account to the other. One tax-free rollover from IRA is within 12 months. So you could do one tax-free. Direct transfer are not subject to limitation. So if you do account to account, which is direct transfer, then you can do as many transfer as you want, but you cannot keep getting the money and deposit the money yourself. 
Now, if you wanted that money yourself, okay, guess what? The employer must withhold 20% for any lump sum distributions. Let's assume you said, you know what? I open another account with a Schwab, Charles Schwab. I open another account with this company or Bank of America, and I want to put all my 401k money in this. Assuming your employer said, yes, we'll give you the money, but guess what? We're going to take 20%, hold 20%. What's that for? That's federal taxes. So what they say, they would say, we're going to keep 20% of the money. We're not going to keep it. We're going to hold it, withhold it as taxes, and you can take the remainder. At the end of the year, you pay 20% taxes to the government because you did not do a direct transfer. If you want to do a direct transfer, all your funds go from one account to the other. So when you transfer your money, do a direct transfer. Don't get the money. If they send you the money because you were terminated or you switch jobs, make sure you read the fine details. If that check is supposed to go into an account, you have 60 days to open an account and put that money in that account. Let's take a look at a summary of all these plans, okay? Maximum contribution per year, deductible IRA is 5,500, non-deductible 5,500, and Roth 5,500. Remember, the total of deductible, non-deductible, and Roth may not exceed 5,500 per year. So that's the limit. Now, you could, you may be able, you may not be able to take the whole thing, but the maximum is 5,500. Tax deductible contribution under the traditional, yes, it's tax deductible. Simply put, you'll get a tax break. Under non-deductible, no, it says non-deductible. You cannot take a deduction. Roth IRA, non-deductible. That's the, that's the plan of Roth IRA. It's non-deductible. Non Tax-free growth income, they all grow tax-free. So as, as you are receiving dividend, as you are receiving interest from bonds, as you are uh, experiencing capital appreciation of your investments, all of it is tax-free. Beginning of AGI phase-out for active participants. So if you have a plan, uh, the for deductible is 63000 okay, and 101 for joint. Now remember, non-deductible, there's no... That's non-deductible. You can put up to 5500 in non-deductible. For Roth IRA, it started at 120 and for joint, 189 Income on distribution, yes. Under deductible amount, the whole income is taxable because you put it in tax-free, so it was deductible here, you cannot also take it tax-free, so you, you, it was deductible, then now when you take it out, everything is taxable. Non-deductible, guess what? Since you did not deduct it, yes for the earning portion. So only the amount that's taxable on the contribution is what you earned. What you put in is tax-free. Under a Roth IRA, as long as it satisfies the five-year limitation, all of it is tax-free. And this is the beauty of Roth IRA. You put your money away, make sure you wait five years before you uh, before you retire, and everything is tax-free, okay? 50% excise tax, age 70 and a half, insufficient distribution. Don't worry about this. This is if you did not take enough contribution, if you did not withdraw enough contribution. 10% early penalty for early withdrawal before 59 and a half. Yes, with exception. Yes, with exception, and yes, with exception. And we looked at the exception earlier, okay? So some of them is... First time home buyer, some of it is educational expenses. You just have to know that there are exceptions that you can take the money out. So this is a summary of deductible IRA, Roth IRA, and non-deductible IRA. Remember, Roth, the beauty of Roth, if you wait five years, everything is tax-free. Your your original money plus any earnings. In the next session, I will work a couple examples or maybe two or three examples. Uh, just showing you how much can you contribute to an IRA using examples. If you have any questions, by all means, email me. If you're studying for your CPA, study hard. It's worth it. If you happen to go my, to 